Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about low pass filters. Um, so the thing is when it comes to treble, the very high treble, like 10 to 20 K, uh, in some instruments like piccolos or even just high percussion instruments, we can have a lot of it. Uh, sometimes it's the recording, closed mics, or sometimes it's just due to the nature of the instrument. Uh, the instrument will be naturally very uh, treble heavy. And the thing is, these instruments can sometimes cause you trouble when it comes to trying to blend them in the mix. Because no matter what you do, they will sound close. You're not going to truly get that depth. And uh, I'm going to explain why and what you can do to really bring these instruments back in the mix. So we have this piccolo here. This is what I did to it. So precedence pans it a bit and adds a bit more depth. Uh, but one of the main things that precedence is doing, other than lowering the gain, is uh, filtering the highs. And on top of that, we have this EQ. And this EQ, as you can see, uh, there is a dynamic EQ here, just kind of compressing the highs if they get a bit too much. But on top of that, the, there is this uh, low cut, um, I mean this high cut, or this low pass. <laughs> it's a bit confusing, but we have this low pass just rolling off the air and stop. So why are we rolling off the air? Uh, the thing is, in the context of a mix, the air is going to just pop through a lot more easily. So what you need to understand is that uh, in an orchestral mix, you tend to have a lot less 10 to 20k than in other genres. Uh, for many reasons, but the main reason is that it's a more far away sound. Uh, we use whole reverbs, which are rolled off in the treble, because of course a whole space, because it's big, it's going to be absorbing the high frequencies. Uh, we use further mic positions to capture orchestral ensembles. So all of this is not going to be very close mic'd, so it's going to have less of the very high treble and not like a rock drum kit, for example, or something like that. So for that reason, if you have one instrument like a very sharp piccolo or close mic captured sound that suddenly has a lot of 10 to 20k, in context of the mix, uh, because of the frequency masking that will happen, um, you're not going to hear the space as much in context. So the piccolo, the reverb of the piccolo, the depth of the piccolo will kind of be masked by the other elements of the orchestra around like under 8 to 10k and these frequencies which are kind of um, unique to the piccolo and you don't that you don't really get in other instruments as much will suddenly poke out like a sore thumb because in the context of the mix now the piccolo is pretty much one of the only things that is this sharp and this treble heavy so you will end up with something that's really going to detach itself from the mix and if you have too much of it well all you're gonna hear is just that sharp 10 to 20k it's going to sound much closer in the context of the mix compared to in solo uh, so you need to fine tune the, the treble to make sure that you don't get too much of that 1020k so that you don't put the instrument out of context. Uh, so now let's listen to a few comparisons and you will understand what I mean. So the effect should be a bit less on YouTube due to the filtering of YouTube compression, but hopefully it's still audible. Uh, I recommend you try this by yourself on your own tracks so you can really hear the full effect. Uh, but basically what I did is that I added this EQ here, which is just a high boost. And this is kind of trying to add back what I cut, uh, the high treble that I cut with these two plugins. Uh, and this is kind of to simulate the, the raw sound, which had a lot of 10 to 20k. So you will hear that in solo, uh, even when I add this treble, you still feel a bunch of depth. Uh, of course, you, you get a bit more proximity due to having that very high treble, but you still hear a bunch of reverb of the piccolo and all that depth. But in the context of the mix, uh, all these kind of high mid frequencies and all that reverb gets, gets kind of masked with the rest of the orchestra. And this really sticks out more like a sore thumb compared to in solo. So let's compare. Of course, this one is sharper, but in solo it's fine, right? It's sharper, but still sounds far away. But now listen to how it's more dramatic in context. Well, now the difference is massive, right? When I turn this on, you hear, you can't unhear that whistle, kind of very sharp treble. And that just puts the piccolo so many meters more in front. It's a huge difference. Um, because all the rest of the lower frequencies of the piccolo are more masked. That very high treble just sticks out very obviously. Um, so yeah, that's why you need to control your very high frequencies so that you add the right amount of distance and depth in your instruments uh, so that you blend them better in the mix. 
So again, let's hear the difference. You know, it's like in context of the mix, the difference is 50% bigger. And that's really why uh, the fine tuning of the very high treble is going to be critical when it comes to deciding where you want your instrument to be. Do you want it in the front or do you want it in the back? Uh, there are several things that will create depth, but uh, very high treble is definitely one of the biggest things because your ear knows the very high treble has to be a close sound. So your ear knows that if something has less high treble, it's going to be more far away. Uh, that's why it has such an effect. Hopefully that was interesting and I will see you in another video. Cheers.